Hi, well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Get y'all a nap? Yes. No? Yes. No. See if Tony did. No. Or keep the other shawl. No. See we all got fed. Fed good. It does good on that. Yeah, buddy. All right, well, I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father, thank you for your state and all that you've given us to the Lord. And I just pray that you just, um, just, just rain down your Holy Spirit upon us tonight, dear Lord, that, uh, that we just uh, get reconciled with you, dear Lord, and that, uh, like the message said this morning, dear Lord, that we just uh, we, we remember you and what all you've done for us at the cross, dear Lord, and, and what you continue to do in our lives, dear Lord. And I pray that we just uh, become in sync in you and just stay focused on you, dear Lord. We just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to get y'all to turn to page 92 in the red red hymnal. If you don't got one, you can raise your hand. We'll get you one. We're going to be singing Victory in Jesus, page 92. <laughs> Still find that right path. We can still seek truth and righteousness. 
I thank God for this church, for the pastor that's here, the people, the song leaders, the Sunday school teachers, people that do many things in here that people don't even know about, and I thank them for it. And I, I consider it a blessing to be able to come here and not feel any negativism or not feel like I'm not welcome. So thank y'all for being the church you are, and that's beautiful piano place. <laughs> So you All right, anyone else? Testimony? I'm just scared. Okay, we'll turn to page 100. And we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse and tell it to Jesus. so still and so gentle sometimes of the things that we don't take notice to. Sometimes it's the little bitty things and sometimes it's the little bitty minor things that we don't take notice to. We see the big things a lot of times. We notice those all the time, most generally. But sometimes we forget to look at the little bitty minute things that is being done in in us or around us or to us or for us or for someone else that we forget to be so thankful for. And I just praise his name today because of the fact that he reminded me and opened my eyes so I could see that again yet. Amen. 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 Okay, we're going to turn to page 120. Page 120, we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Pass Me By. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. 
right, last chance for testimony. You got one? Okay. All right, we're going to turn to page 136. Page 136, we're going to sing Precious Name. Page 
and saying, Where is the promises of, the, of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that, by the word of the God, by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Go ahead and read uh, through uh, verse eight, please. <clears throat> Whereby the word that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as of one day. Okay, go ahead and read verse 9. Well, oh, we just read this whole thing. I like the scripture. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering in usward, not willing that any should perish, but that shall all should come to repentance. All right, so the, the word is, is plain in, in, uh, from Peter, and we read from Peter this morning about what, what the Lord had commanded him to remember and what he was wanting people to remember and to, to show us that it was good that we remember certain things. And here he says, I want to stir up your pure minds by... The, by way of remembrance. So it, it, he, he's telling us, he said, I want to show, what does he mean by pure minds? <laughs> well, it gets quiet real quick, doesn't it? Uh, it? The pure mind is the same thing as the pure heart. It's, it's the, the mind absence of evil and evil thinking. So he says, in order for you to have this, uh, I want to stir up your, your, uh, your, your remembrance and I want to stir up your pure mind and the way we'll do this is by what you remember. It's what you have to do. And that you and what does he show us that we need to do? Now, people who think that you don't have to read the scripture, you don't believe this scripture right here. Because in order for us to stir up our pure minds, he says that you may be mindful. In other words, you need to know in your mind what? The words which were spoken by whom? The prophets. Where do you find the words spoken by the prophets? In the Bible. Where in the Bible? The Old Testament. That old book that ain't worth two cents to nobody. Yeah, right. Amen. That old book that the world tells us, oh, don't worry about that old book. It don't mean nothing. It's just kind of like what you're te they're teaching our kids in school now. Don't worry about what happened during the Civil War. The thing happened in World War II, that's all false, phony. We'll tell you what to believe. And, and, and so they're still telling us that on the, they're telling us that about the Word of God. And they're changing the Word of God constantly and consistently and they're using a, 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 a word <coughs> definitions and, and they go back and say, oh, they didn't... Make. Do you really think that God gave us this Word and He didn't have them to, to, to interpret it correctly for us? Really? Does that mean that all the people that before our time, before we got so smart that we knew what exactly what God was thinking, that we reinterpreted the Bible to make it, guess what, mean what we want it to mean. Amen? Amen. Really? Come on now. That means all the people before we got this smart, they were believing all this stuff was just a lie to them. It didn't mean what it says. It didn't say what it means. You know what? The Word of God is infallible. Amen. And we need to Amen. treat it that way. Amen. And we need to take it at what it says and not what we want it to say. And we don't need to try to change the meaning. If we don't understand what it means, don't try to understand what it means. Wait till the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. So he says, he said, I want you to be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets. Now he didn't stop there. He said, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, of our Lord and Savior. So he says, you need to be mindful of the things of the Old Testament, the things the prophets wrote, but you also need to be mindful of the things we as apostles who walk with Jesus Christ wrote in the New Testament. That's what he's telling us. In other words, these letters that we call them, that Paul wrote, that Peter wrote, that John wrote, all letters, all epistles, all written to churches, or, or certain people in certain areas, these, these things are written for our benefit that we can be mindful of what they remember about when they actually walk, talk, and touch Jesus Christ. That's important stuff. That's the reason he told them in, that, in our scripture this morning, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He's sitting there talking to them when he's telling them that, y'all. 
uh, what we remember and what we know is is important. And so we need. So that tells us we need to we need to read scripture. We need to study scripture. We need to have the scripture in our heart and in our mind, and we need to understand it. Amen. Because that's the way the uh, scripture with the understanding is what leads to the pure mind. Okay. So any questions about this so far? Because this is important stuff here. And so he says that you be mindful of the words of the prophets and be mindful of the words of the apostles uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, and here's the reason you've got to be mindful, because in the last days, how many of y'all believe we're living in the last days? Absolutely. You know what? I've heard that all of my life, have you? Yeah. But don't be alarmed at that. Because time don't mean the same thing to God it means to us. Amen? <coughs> and a long time to us ain't but a blink to Him. Just a moment for Him. And so it's not, it's not unusual that every generation since Christianity began began to look for Jesus to come back because they saw things changing around them. What it is, when you pay attention to the Word of God and you get this pure mind, evil begins to loom bigger and bigger in your eyes. And if there's one thing that I can see from in today's world, that evil and evil evil is growing exponentially every day. I, I don't know where this is going to end before it's over with. I mean, I, you, you're saying some of the worst, diabolical, most evil, corrupt, immoral stuff, and it's good. God help us. But if you've got, that's why they want to silence the church. That's why they don't want you to meet together. That's not why they don't want me up here preaching and spitting on you. They don't want you to have a pure mind because you can't have a pure mind and believe that poppycock that they keep preaching to us. Amen. You can't obey the word of God and obey the word of man. It don't work out that way. You put God first, you obey God. Amen? Amen. And so he says you got to know this, and he said the reason you got to know this is because there, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Buddy, that pretty much describes it, don't it? They scoff and make fun. What does it mean to scoff? Ridicule. Yeah, they ridicule. And you, you people, why don't y'all come into the 21st century? Well, y'all keep living back in the days of old, and you just don't need to... Do yeah, don't you know the world changing? Get with the program. Get 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 hip. Get some get right. some uh, modern ideas. Get some modern thinking. You know what the scripture says? Follow the ancient path. Walk in the old way. That's what he's trying to tell us here. You better pay attention to the Old Testament prophets. Those folks know what they talk about, and what they prophesied then is taking place before our very eyes today. Amen. Yep. Yep. The, the test of the prophet was if what he said became true. And buddy, they're passing the test right now. Oh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all of those Old Testament prophets, Hosea, Amos, all of them, Obadiah, you could just keep every one of them have hit the nail <coughs> on the head and we're seeing it take place before our very eyes. I, I may not, we may not never get to another two scriptures here because I'm going to tell you this is good stuff right here. And he says, well, look at what they scoff about. Well, where is the promise of his coming? Do you know what? People who go to church on a regular basis will tell you they're looking for Christ to come every, any moment. But most people aren't worried about that. If they were, they'd be living their lives like they thought he was coming any moment. Amen? And so he says that uh, this, uh, well, they, they scoff. This is one way they scoff. Where is he? Uh, it, they were talking about this when the fathers fell asleep. And all things continue just as they were in the beginning of creation. The sun still comes up. It still clouds up. It still rains. It's still, oh, we have seasons. We have time of harvest and seed time. Uh, nothing's changed. What makes you think he's coming back? Hmm. That's kind of the way they acted in Noah's day, wasn't it? Yeah. They made fun of Noah for building the ship because God told him he was not going to take this place out. They scoffed at him. They mocked him. 
And Noah just kept right on building. You know what that tells me and you? Let them mock, let them scoff, just keep right on serving Jesus. Amen. Keep on studying, keep on reading, keep on believing, and keep on having a pure mind and a pure heart. Keep believing He's coming because He is. Amen. He gave them 120 years after He told that to know. Why? Well, we get to that in a minute. And so he says that they, they, they made this, this proclamation. They made fun of, of Noah. It, it ain't going to, the world ain't going to end. Hey, what's wrong with you? And then it says, look at this, verse 5. For this they are w willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were made of old and the earth standing out of water and in water. Let me tell you what. Most people don't believe God spoke this word into existence. Christian people believe that. And there's Christ people who call themselves Christians that don't believe that. <laughs> I hate to you came from a monkey and some of you look like it. <laughs> well, let me change that brief phrase. Hey, some man. of us look like it. <laughs> some of us act like it. Amen. A little humor, but let me tell you what, it ain't so. We didn't crawl out of the water. <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing what they come with. You know, I like what that little girl asked that guy that time. He said that, that she was trying to, he was trying to teach her about evolution, and she said, "Well, if, if man evolved from a monkey, why are they still monkeys?" Uh -huh. right. Come on. Why did all of them change? Exactly. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyway. Let me tell you what, we, we need to know the Word of God. We need to believe. You know what? Knowing and believing is two different things. Mm -hmm. We need to know the Word of God, and we need to believe the Word of God, and we need to have a pure mind that's filled with the Word of God. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, oh, unto God, not men. A workman that <coughs> needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a tall order. And it can't be done by normal people. You know how it can only be done? <coughs> it can only be done by people who's filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to see that in a minute can't be done no other way. I don't care how many theologians and how many doctor's degrees and how many studies and, and degrees in Bible they've got. If they don't have the Holy Ghost, they don't know what this says. That's right. That's right. Sometimes we get too smart for our own good. We out thank God. <laughs> Try to. We, we know what God meant by everything. You want to know what God meant? Just ask me. <coughs> You know what I've been studying? I was telling somebody today I've been studying uh, uh, Matthew. I start, finally got into the New Testament in my studies. And I've been <coughs> with, uh, I think five days so far to Matthew chapter 5, the Lord's Sermon on the Mount. And I, I made note of something. Look at what he constantly says in the, and, and y'all don't have to turn there. Uh, it, it, beginning in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 27, look at what he says. He's talking about teachings on murder and anger. And this is what he says. You have heard that it was said by them of old. And then in verse 22, you know how he starts it off? But I say unto you. Now, now what does that tell you? I know what you heard. <coughs> I know what you were taught. I know what they told you I meant by that. But now let me tell you, because I'm God, what I meant by that. Uh -huh. Amen. That's why we get so confused when we read things like this, because we have been taught away whether it was right or wrong, and we believed it, and all of a sudden we get filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says, not thank the way we did. <laughs> now he says that in verse 21 and verse 22 and verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old, and then in verse uh, 28, he says, But I say unto you. <coughs> now, what does that tell us, Troy? It tells us that somebody was misinterpreting what he told them back in Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers, and he straightened it up in the New Testament because why? Because the Word is here in the flesh, and the Word knows what the Word means. You believe that? I believe that, don't you? 
Hmm. I got going. And so he says, he says, so I told you that the word, the world was formed by the word of God. Do you believe that or not? It don't make no difference whether you believe it or not. That's the way it happened because that's what the word says. Amen. <laughs> you don't have to agree with him. He don't care. He didn't even ask my opinion when he created this place. Did he ask <laughs> yours? <laughs> I didn't think so. He says, but the heavens and the earth which are now, now listen to this, by the same word, what the Old Testament prophets say, and by what these apostles are saying, they're agreeing, they, the, this, the, the same word, this world is kept in store, reserved, now look at this, unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I keep telling all this over and over. We need to stay focused on the Word. We need to stay focused on the kingdom work. We need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. It's time that we quit looking to the right, to the left. It's time we got on His heels and stay behind Him where we're supposed to be because this is the end that's coming to this world and there ain't one thing, men, you can do to stop it. Amen. Amen. And He's going to put men in positions, whether you like them or not, to accomplish this very goal. And they're going to be, listen to me, they're going to be ungodly men. Now there's a group of men that exist and always has that has a form of godliness but denies the power of. How many of these politicians do you hear say, oh, I'm a good Catholic? <laughs> well, what in the world does that mean? And then you go sign a, a sheet of paper saying you kill all the babies you want to. That ain't a good Catholic. Amen. Hmm. Now, he goes on, he says that this is going to happen, and this day of judgment is going to come against ungodly men, and what is it going to look like? It's going to be fire. This place is going to burn. Okay? And he says, but beloved, now he's talking back to us, be not ignorant of this one thing. And he's talking back about the scoffers. They say, well, where is it? And it gives us a reminder that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Time don't mean nothing to God in eternity. Time only means something to us because we just got a short time here. And then I like this one. You don't think this is going to come around? This is a promise of God. The promises of God are not always good toward men. There's promises he just made to ungodly men. And he says, so the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. So why did the Lord come? Because he's not wanting anyone to go to hell. That's right. He's not willing that any should perish. Why does he keep delaying his coming? Because what? Let's say one more. Let's say one more. Let's let one more get to, get received salvation. Let's let one more be, 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 have his name written in the Lamb Book of Life because when this happens it's all over. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to be no do-overs. Quiet here. Any comments? Okay, let's go ahead. Brother, let me say go something ahead. right there. I, stu trying to study Israeli people and learning their ways and, and why they did what they did and how they got. <clears throat> you read and learn that in the life of a young couple in Israel, a young Jewish man and woman, when they first met and they decided they were going to get married, that was the end of their togetherness. The woman went back to her family and the man went back to his father's house and started building an extra room on his father's house. And he built that room on his father's house until his father said, go get her, go get her, it's time. And I believe that's just as plain as it can be on the nose on my face. God is just waiting to tell Jesus, go get her. That's all Christ is And waiting. that's all it's all about right now. Yeah. I don't know, we don't know the time or when, but that is so plain to me that Jesus is just waiting on the Father to say, Go get your bride and get it over with. Amen. That's, that is that's no a crack. fact. 
Now remember this. This is what he. he this is what we started started off with. He said, "Let me stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance." We got to know the scripture. We got to remember the scripture. We got to know the promises. We got to know the prophecies. We got to know where this world's going. Not for our good, but according to the word of God, so we can share this information with people who are lost. And y'all, if you share enough of it, they're going to see it one of these. They're going to see it sooner or later. They, they may not. They, they may not believe nothing you say, and then there might be a world event that will change their mind about everything because you told them this was going to happen. That's the way prophecy works, and and the prophecy that we can share, that we can remember, that has not happened yet, is going to happen. That's why. Peter went on ahead and said, uh, God ain't slack concerning his promises. When he says it, it's done. Sure. Amen? Do you believe that? Yeah. Now let's go to uh, 2 Timothy. Jeremiah, you got it. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses uh, 6 through 8, please. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is thee by... which is in thee by the putting of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Okay, so Paul is talking to Timothy, and earlier in the, in the scripture, he says, I have remembrance of thee. He's ta all talking to Timothy. He's written in this letter. And he remembers Timothy. And he also says in verse 5, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, and he gives his mother and his grandmother credit for instilling the faith in Timothy that he has. Mm -hmm. They were godly women who knew the word of God, who knew the promises of God, who knew the prophecies of God, and they had instilled this into their child. You don't think raising a child is not an awesome responsibility that God puts us in control of and expects us to do just what Eunice and Lois did? And we have failed miserably. We've gotten caught up in the world scheme of, of having more and more and making more and more and having more things till we've neglected this great salvation to our children and we wonder why more of our kids. Hey, I'm throwing that at me. I'm throwing it, we, we all need to hear this. Amen. We fail. And guess what? We get a do-over with our grandkids. Amen. Amen. We get a do-over with our grandkids if we're fortunate enough. But so look in verse 6 then. He said, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up, there's that word again. Remembering ought to stir us up. A while ago, it stirred up our mind, our pure mind. This morning, it stirred up the memory of who Christ was in his, in his humanness. That they were actually able to do what they did with him and what he did for us as a man that no other man could do. Now, he says, I, I want to stir up the gift that's in you. Now let me ask you a question. What gift is he talking about? Ah, what'd you say? Say that loud. The Holy Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Well, how do I know that? Because when Peter spoke in Acts 2 38, and they asked him, How shall we be saved? You remember what he said? And most of y'all can't quote this, but some of you can. He said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy, the gift the Holy of the Holy Ghost. And so Paul, uh, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy. He said, I want you to remember something. I want to stir up the Holy Ghost that's inside of you. Y'all know what that means? Y'all know what that is? That's revival. That's rededication. That's reconciliation. It's when a, a man in our sinfulness comes back and recognizes who God is and our spirit goes, Whoa! Amen. I think that every time I see this a scripture like this, I think about John the Baptist while he was still in his mother's womb. Yeah. 
<laughs> and when Mary went and talked to Elizabeth and told her what had happened to her, the Bible said that the Holy Ghost filled Elizabeth and John the Baptist in her womb. And what did that baby do? He leaped inside of her womb. Wow! We need to leap. We need to get stirred up. We need to get so stirred up that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we're not afraid to say the word of Jesus. That we quit letting this stinking world tell us you can't do that. Oh yes I can. By whose authority? By the authority of Jesus Christ. By the authority of Lord God Almighty. By the authority of the word of God I can do that. Amen. And can they put you in jail? Well they did these guys. Man. Did that stop him? <laughs> Where do you think Paul wrote writing his letter from? He's in the slammer right now. And he still, they knew you, you get stirred up. You remember. Well, Paul, I might wind up where you did. No, I don't want you to wind up where I'm at. I don't want you to wind up where I'm going to be. Amen. Paul knew where he was going. Remember he told me, he said, I wish you was like me except for these bonds. <clears throat> Amen. Why did he say that? Because he knew where he was going. For him to live was Christ and him to die was gain. That's what he said. You just go ahead and kill me. I'm going to look right straight in Jesus' face when I open my eyes the next time. You let me live, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus Christ so when they open their eyes in death, they can see him too. That's stirring up. That's what we need stirred up. Yes, Lord. And how do you do it? Remembrance By remembrance. He said, wherein I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. And how did he do it? He said, By the putting on hands. Hmm. You, let me tell you what. You know why this COVID mask, what do they tell us? Don't you touch anybody. <laughs> What does the word tell us? The if you're sick, you come before the elders of the church and let them anoint your head with all and put their hands on you and pray and you will be healed. Yep. The world don't want you doing that. Mm -hmm. The world don't want you putting your hands on anybody. We don't go, I put my hands on somebody, I might get something bad. Well, duh, that happened before COVID. Preach it, brother. Yeah. And all of a sudden, COVID is the worst thing that ever happened in this world. And everything that's counterproductive to COVID is counterproductive to the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything they're telling you not to do affects only what they want to be affected. That's it. I'll say this again. Y'all all heard this a million times. I'm going to say it to you again. The same persons that won't come to church because of COVID will go to Walmart, bump shoulders, and fight over the double on the shelves. Amen. Amen. Yep. Don't give me this baloney. We, do you believe your days are numbered? Do you believe God knows the number of your days? Do you believe God tells you when you'll live? God will tell you when you'll die and you ain't going to know where he's ready? Then what are you scared of? That's it. Because whether you're die of COVID or you die of a heart attack or you get just run over or you have a plane crash or you just drop dead, when your day comes, you're gone. Amen. COVID or no. Now, we preach that. Do you believe that? And what are we afraid of? Hmm. I don't understand us sometimes. <laughs> and I'm in that us category, by the way. He said, so, so for God has not given us, listen to this, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Uh -huh. God, we need to hear this message tonight. I didn't even know we needed to hear it so bad. Yeah, not. He said, he goes, I want you to stir up that Holy Ghost in you. I want you to stir him up inside of you. Because he had not given you the spirit of fear, but of what? Power. Amen. Jesus told him, <coughs> when before he ever ascended, he said, go into Galilee, and I'm going to meet you there. And then when they stood there gazing, the angel told him, go, go where he told you to go. Where'd they go? 
They went to an upper room. And why did Jesus tell them they needed to go there? Because you need to be endowed with power from on high. You need to receive the gift that I that the Father has for you. You need this gift. If you don't have this gift, and Acts 1 and 8 tells us the whole thing. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be a witness for me. Our witness is terrible. Amen. Amen. So he said, I need you. He said, Timothy, I, I know you've got all this stuff that mom and grandma give you. And I, I know you've got all this knowledge and I know that they pump the word of God into you and I know you know what to believe and I know you know who, but I want to tell you, it got to get stirred up. Yeah. Amen. Because people respond to excitement. They respond to passion. They respond to enthusiasm. Oh, we just get up and uh, now God going to come back one day. Yeah, you're ready, ain't you? Come on now. Paul said, stir the gift up. Get it stirred. What does that tell you? Let me ask you a question. What happens if you find a hornet's nest? And you say, I think I'll stir these hornets up. And you reach up there and you grab this hornet's nest and you go, Wah! what's going to happen? <laughs> what do you think he's talking about here? <laughs> They're going to convince you. Put it that way. It's time to shake things up. It's time to stir the Holy Spirit up in us. And it's time for everybody to see we got something in us that's our hope of glory and they can have it too. That's right. Amen. God hasn't given you the spirit to fear. We ain't supposed to be hiding. We're not supposed to be sitting there shaking. We're supposed to be out witnessing. We're about to be proclaiming in the name of Jesus and telling people they can't go to heaven without him. And the world says, that's terrible. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> What's mom going to think? I don't really care. What are the Muslims going to think? I don't care. What are them Hindus going to think? They're wrong. They can't go down without Jesus either. That's for sure. Amen. But what does the world tell you? Oh, you're wrong. We got to learn how to get along. Mm -hmm. You got to know. Ask Oprah. There's more than one way to have it. <laughs> she said it in no time. How many millions of ignorant people believe that trash? That's right. Why do you think Paul keeps calling us ignorant? Because anybody that would believe what she said is ignorant. <laughs> they don't want to hear no hillbilly preacher. They want somebody with a, with a Hollywood background to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got no money, we're not going to listen to you. You don't know nothing. <laughs> Why do you think there's preachers that like to be stinking rich? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, more money they got, the more folks will listen to them. I won't be like him. Mm -hmm. I want me one of those twenty-five million dollar mansions to live in. Uh -huh. I feel sorry. Wow. Right. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And I like this last one, the one we've been missing out on here during the COVID. Mind. The sound mind. Yeah. We. How many of you? Uh, have, have kept up any at all with what these so-called geniuses, specialists, scientists, and doctors all tell us. They say, listen to them. How many times have they changed their mind about the way they've thought about all this? <laughs> they change the goalpost on a daily basis. They tell us now because they don't want to keep that, that they're afraid we're fixing to come out of the closet and start being people again. There's a new strand now. There's been two people dead of it. And it's going to be 100,000 before it's over with. Why would they tell you that? Now let me tell you, me and my wife both had COVID and some of y'all had COVID. I talked to my doctor here the other day. You know what he told me? He said, brother, he said Gary, he didn't call me brother Gary. He said, Gary, it's crazy. He said, a man like you, you're healthy. You get COVID, you get a mild cold, a little bit of temperature, and you just, that's it. 
You get out and play and work and do what you need to do, go through your 11 days like it's a vacation and enjoy life and get good right back on the sand the sand and ride again. He said, but another man that's just as healthy as you are, he said, get you and I had to put him in a hospital and stick a tube in him and let a machine breathe for him. He said, I don't understand it. How can we have a new strand if everybody's got a different symptom? That's just a dumb question from this hick. I don't know. You ever notice the flu has disappeared? Gone. Man. Gone. And you know why? They give us a reason. I saw it. It was on the CDC. They said, because people are wearing masks now. <laughs> It'll stop the flu, but it won't stop COVID. <laughs> Hello. We're being played. They've changed their minds almost as much as they changed their socks. That's right. And we're getting, we're getting played. And God has not given us this spirit that we, that we shriek and shriek in fear. That he's given us a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind that we know when we're getting buffaloed. We know when they're telling us truth. We know when they're telling us lies. And I tell you one thing I know about a liar. The Bible is very plain about a liar. They represent Satan. Jesus said he is a liar and he is the father of lies. Amen? So who do you think is pushing all these buttons of these people that can't tell us nothing straight? It ain't God. If God was giving them their information, we'd have done had this nailed down and over with. He's got order. He, when he says it's going to be this way, that's the way it is. But when the devil does it, he's just playing. He says, well, look at them idiots down there. They believe in everything I say. What's this? I'll change those doctor's mind. Mm -hmm. I'll let him tell you something different. And everybody goes, oh, no. I just got used to the last one. Hmm. He Amen. said, Amen. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do this next one. Uh, Jim, you got John chapter 14, uh, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now we've been talking about remembrance all day. We just talked about what Paul said to Timothy to stir <coughs> up the gift that's in you. The gift which is the Holy Ghost. We know that. And Jesus before he ever was crucified told his disciples, his apostles he said the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father is going to send in my name what's he going to do? He's going to teach us all things, not some of them. He's going to teach us all of them. All things what? And bring all things to your remembrance, remembrance so you can have a, a, a pure mind. And with the pure mind comes the pure heart because our minds are on evil continually. That's why they destroyed the first world. Amen? Uh -huh. So he wants to give us a pure mind with a pure heart. And he says, this is going to come through the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that my Father is going to give you when I go away. He's going to send him in my name. So he, the Comforter comes in the name of Jesus. That's how Jesus dwells in us. That's how we get power from Jesus in us. That's how we get wisdom from Jesus in us. That's how we know the truth of Jesus in us. That's how we are taught. The Word of God is through the Holy Ghost. Not through the preacher. Not through the teacher. But through the Spirit of God. And he says, now look at this last part. And he says, and he's going to teach you all things. And listen to this. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. You don't think the words of Jesus Christ are not important? The Holy Ghost is going to help them remember what Jesus Christ told them. You know, some of these Gospels, they wasn't none of them written the year after Christ died. 
Y'all know that? They claimed that the Gospel of John was written 70 years after the death of Christ. John would have been near death near his time of dying when he wrote it. I learned while I studied in the beginning of the New Testament this past week that uh, Mark was probably the very first gospel written. Now we got them all out of order in this book, don't we? Mark wasn't even an apostle. Luke was not an apostle. But the things that they wrote, and they said, well, how did they remember all the words? <laughs> Christ told them right there in John. John remembered it. He wrote it so we all know how Matthew could write all, how he could write down the Sermon on the Mount, the gym, word for word. How did he do that? Because the Comforter was in him and he was teaching him and helping him remember all of the words of Jesus Christ. Praise God. You want to know how we're going to get all through all this? We need to stay full of the Holy Ghost. We need to keep Him stirred up inside of us. We need to study the Word of God. And we need to rely on the Holy Ghost to help us remember when we go to share. Amen. That's something else. I'm fixing to close. I, I get, I'm just excited about this. <coughs> when Jesus Christ was baptized and he came up out of the water, I think I shared this the other day with y'all. He came up out of the water. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, descended on him like a dove and landed on him. And there was a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son and my well pleased. Some of them didn't believe that. Some of them thought it was thunder. That's the kind of voice that they heard, a booming voice. And the Bible says that straightway Jesus went into the wilderness. And how did he go? Why did he go there? Because the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of 40 nights, Satan came and took him. You don't think Satan's not powerful? He, because Jesus was a man. So he took him. And Jesus went with him. He was led there to go with him. And in his temptation, those three temptations that he was faced with, do you know what he did? He spoke the word. He spoke the word three different times from the Old Testament, because they didn't have no New Testament. Yeah. And at the last one, Satan left him mm -hmm. because he could not compete with the word and the truth of God. Amen. No There's nothing he can do about it. How important is it? Why do you think Satan is spending all of this effort in this world today to destroy this word and to make it where it don't even mean anything? Y'all, we better get with the program. Amen. We need to get stirred up. And I don't mean to fight. We do a fight, all right, but a spiritual warfare. We need to start fighting for the people we love that are lost, for our neighbors that are lost. God don't want any of them to perish. And he, by his design, now listen to me, by his design, he's put me and you here to help them find Jesus Christ. That's our purpose. That's our work. That's who we are. That's the church that he's going to come back for. <coughs> and woe be to that person that when he splits that eastern sky is not watching for him, not waiting for him, not ready for him, because they might not go with him. Because he ain't coming back for somebody that ain't doing it. God help us. In comments. Would you stand? Now, this, I don't know. I, I didn't realize when I was writing this down how powerful this stuff really was. The Word of God is powerful. The Bible says about itself, it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. And it's able to divide asunder 
between the joint of the marrow and the bone and the spirit of a man. It will rip us and tear us. It will bring us under conviction. It will convict us of our sins. And then it offers like the Old Testament didn't do. The law didn't do. Didn't offer a way out. Jesus changed all that. We have the antidote for sin. Amen. Just like the snake serum. We got an antidote for sin. I don't want to say this as a sound like a brag, but you know, there's been many times, and uh, quite a few years even here lately, I've got away from God. But it has been an honor to me the number of times I've been attacked by Satan and his demons because apparently there's something else I need to be doing. But, you know, even I've had people come up to me and say, there is no God. The, the Garden of Eden was a fable, you know. Adam and Eve, they're just fairy tales. I had one here recently that guy attacked me. He said, there is no God. No, you know. We all came about through revolution. I said, how smart of you. I mean, you believe everything around you was created by nothing, from nothing. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. It takes way too much faith for me to believe that there is not some type of intelligent designer behind this. And you know, I've, I've, I've come up against these attacks against me quite a bit. And just from what I believe, not necessarily so much against me, but for what I <laughs> preach and, and, and believe. And I want to thank God for the honor of being attacked for that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, thank you for every persecution he, he did. <laughs> it honored him that they persecuted Jesus Christ and but you know, you know when, you've won, when you won, when you when you say something like that, and even though it's not face to face, they're still talking to you. But all of a sudden, you can feel the doubt from them because they truly believed what they were trying to say, and I just blew their world apart with that one little statement. And of course, it wasn't me; it came from God. But because I'm not that smart. But uh, to feel doubt from these demons after you said, you know, it's just, it's an honor. It's, and it's what most of us need to do. We need to be ready, like you say, to be in remembrance of the word <coughs> and be able to use those words against the evil in this world. I mean, it's just, Like we've said earlier, he's waiting on the last one to cross that line. That's all he's waiting on. And it may be the next person you talk to, the next person you bring to him. And, you know, if I can bring my Lord God down to earth by talking to somebody, you better believe I'm going to talk to him. I'm sorry, I'll shut up. You know, God's so good at helping you remember. He he uh he made Moses remember Adam and Eve, didn't he? He did. He 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 remembered everything God ever spoke and he wrote it all down. Why we can read it today. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? These altars are open, y'all. I'm telling you, we need revival. We need our hearts stirred up. We need to wake up the Holy Ghost. You know what? The Holy Ghost ain't asleep. It's us who are asleep. We need to wake up, stir Him up, and that's visible. When we stir the Holy Spirit up in our lives, it's easy to see. There's enthusiasm. There's excitement. There's a, a, a looking forward to things to come. There's an excitement about studying, reading the Word won't be boring to you anymore. Why? Because 
because when you stir up that gift, he'll teach you what it means. You may not get it all at one time, but over a period of time, you keep reading and keep studying, stay stirred, and he'll bring it to your remembrance, and he'll show you what truth is, and what you need to know, how you need to share, and he will, there will be ample opportunity for you to be a witness for him. His altar broke for prayer. Thank y'all for being here tonight. We got some visitors here, so don't let them get out of here without telling them howdy. And uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for listening. We will uh, have a business meeting uh, direct, uh, following the uh, service, so let's uh, <coughs> dismiss the uh, ones that want to stay and, and uh, stay for this business meeting and welcome to stay. Those of you who want to go and need to go, just by all means, uh, go. But uh, we give you a little bit of time to visit with one another before we start our, our business meeting. Uh, John Terry, would you dismiss us? Dearly yeah, Father, thank you for your word tonight, the Lord. I pray that that word just sinks deep into our hearts, the Lord, that, that we, we live our lives according to your word, the Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit, that, that your Holy Spirit is our guide, the Lord. That you just lead God to protect us and Lord, give us opportunities to spread spread your word and the gospel to others. Lord. And um, I pray if there's anyone that, that needs you as the Lord's Savior, that that you use us to reach in you. We just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.